First tonight at 5 o'clock, we are tracking the latest on today's deadly shooting at a westerly housing complex. One woman is dead. Two others are in the hospital tonight after a shooting at the Babcock Village on Cross Street, seen here on the Pinpoint News Tracker. Police say a resident opened fire at the facility's main entrance, and he eventually turned the gun on himself. Target 12 investigator Tim White has been tracking the story since it broke this morning. He has the latest on the focus of this investigation, which is still ongoing tonight. We also have live team coverage from Westerly tonight. Seth Machado shares what community members are saying. But first, we go live to Steve Nielsen for the very latest on today's tragic events. Steve. Well, Caroline, the Westerly Police Chief told us tonight when a tactical team first arrives at a scene like this, the first thing they're supposed to do is go into the building and try to eliminate the threat, go right for the shooter. But one of the problems here tonight originally was that they couldn't locate the shooter. And that's why, the, Steve, the community was on such high alert. They didn't know if a gunman might be on the loose. And it only took them about two hours, they said, but that was a very tense two hours. The call came in at 1030. Someone was shot. A second call, a second victim. Westerly police rushed to Babcock Village, a 151 apartment complex, partially with assisted living. Hectic, to say the least. A tactical team entered with the state police tactical team going door to door. The facility was a, was a lockdown in place. We had the residents stay in their rooms. We did not let anybody in and out of the facility. In total, three people were shot, one dead, two wounded. They couldn't find the shooter, though. Westerly police chief Sean Lacey says schools were on lockdown, businesses closed nearby while police searched. Our cameras captured Bearcats and armed teams walking around the building. Another team scoured the surveillance video inside. The chief says video captured a 66 year old man leaving the area where the victims were shot. He was a resident. The state police colonel says their team opened the door to the man's residence with the master key. The door was open, the robot entered and found the, uh, the suspect uh, well, appeared to have a self inflicted gunshot wound. The lockdown was lifted. The threat was over, according to police, but the impact, I mean, it's a shock to the community, will continue to be felt. Now, the police chief said they did recover a handgun at the scene. What do we know about the suspect tonight? Not much. Police won't release his identity. They do say, though, that uh, he is known to police. He's had contacts with them before. What kind of contacts they've had, they won't release that tonight. And, Steve, the shooting really rocked the community of Westerly. As people heard about it this morning, they sheltered in their homes, in their workplaces. Um, as you mentioned, the schools were on lockdown. Of course, in the end, it turned out the gunman was inside. A scary few hours in Westerly as law enforcement converged. Schools locked down and the community wondered. My daughter and my son both texted me saying that they were in lockdown mode and that the room was being shut. Sean Pazel raced back to Westerly when he heard his kid's school was locked down, fearing the worst. It's a small community, a small town. It's not going to happen here. Um, but then you realize that really nobody is immune to um, something like this. So it can happen anywhere. It it's unbelievably scary. I picked my son up early from school um, and came right here. Sisters Ashley Ogrodowitz and Morgan Lattimore were outside the Babcock Village housing complex, waiting to find out if their grandmother was okay. She lives there and they couldn't reach her. I tried calling her, I tried calling my dad. Um, I tried calling my dad's girlfriend and like, I just can't get through to anybody. Morgan and Ashley later told us they did reach their grandmother and she's safe, but the family is devastated about the death of a 47 year old woman who worked at Babcock Village. Two other victims were shot, another employee, a 38 year old woman who is in critical condition and flown to Yale New Haven Hospital and a 66 year old woman who lived at Babcock who is at Rhode Island Hospital. My grandmother's friends with a lot of the people here and they're all so friendly and so nice. Like I just don't see how this could have happened. And police have not yet released the names of any of those victims. Now, Babcock Village issued a statement tonight saying they are shocked and saddened by the tragedy that happened here and that the safety of their residents and staff is uh, their top priority. They are not answering questions yet about that suspect who lived at Babcock. Live in Westerly, I'm Steph Machado, Eyewitness News. All right, our thanks to both Steve and Steph. Now, Target 12 investigator Tim White, you have been tracking this story every step of the way all day. You've been in contact with law enforcement, and you have a new piece of information in the investigation tonight? Yeah, I do, Caroline. I am told that investigators believe that the handgun the suspect purchased was bought recently, mm -hmm. and, and they're looking at right now where and obviously how that suspect uh, purchased the handgun. But early indications are it was done so legally. The police chief in Westerly said earlier today that the suspect was known to them, as Steve said, so questions remain about what the interactions with law enforcement were. 
And the chief tells us there was no red flag order on the su suspect, which would have prevented him from purchasing the weapon. And Tim, with the suspect now dead, what are the next steps in the investigation? Well, uh, as you probably saw earlier today, Attorney General Peter Nerona was at the scene, and a lot of people might be wondering, well, with the suspect dead, as you point out, why would he be there? Yeah. First off, they did not know until this afternoon what happened to the suspect. So it's common uh, suspect. So it's common for the prosecutors to be on scene for a homicide to make sure legally law enforcement is checking the right boxes to preserve the case. But I got off the phone with Attorney General Peter Nerona just a short time ago, and he tells me they are writing up search warrants for the suspect's apartment right now. Now, why would they do that since they already have gotten into the apartment? Well, that's because investigators can't just start poking around without convincing a judge they have probable cause. They may need to look at a cell phone, for instance, or data on a computer. They have to search the areas of the apartment for other guns, and all of that has to be done legally. Now, kind of an interesting piece of information we learned during this afternoon's press conference. Police said they used a bomb squad robot to confirm the suspect right. was dead. I understand you're learning more about that, too. Right. We're working on that right now. We were able to get actually a picture of the actual robot that was used today, and we're working on how the techni uh, technicians were able to operate that remotely, and we'll have that for you tonight, new at 6 o'clock. All right. Thank you, Tim. And we will have continuing coverage of today's deadly shooting in Westerly, both on air and online at WPRI.com. Our live coverage continues at 5.30. You can also get the very latest headlines on our website and the WPRI 12 News app. Just tonight at 5.30, we want to bring you up to speed on the Westerly shooting. As we've been reporting, one woman is dead and two others injured, one critically. New at 5.30, you'll hear from a woman who had to shelter in place during the terrifying ordeal. Police say a resident opened fire at the main entrance of his housing complex before turning the gun on himself. Let's get right to Target 12 investigator Ted Nisi in the Breaking News Center. Ted. Caroline, serious violence is so rare in Westerly. The town was shocked by this. The police, the police chief, in fact, tells us he doesn't know the last time they had a homicide in Westerly. Here's what the authorities are telling us at this hour. Around 10.30 a.m., a 66-year-old male resident allegedly opened fire in the main entrance of the Babcock Village housing complex, shooting three women. One, a 47-year-old Babcock Village employee, was pronounced dead at the scene. Another, a 38-year-old employee, was said to be in extreme critical condition at mid-afternoon after being flown to Yale New Haven Hospital in Connecticut. The third, a 66-year-old resident, was in stable condition at Rhode Island Hospital. Police eventually found the suspect dead in his room from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. And as I said, with schools on lockdown and a heavy police presence around the scene, many Westerly residents were scared. I spoke by phone with an employee of a nearby business as she sheltered with her colleagues in a locked garage. We always saw we were we just heard sirens and we started getting information from the outside. We have we have no windows We're in a shop, we have no windows out there. Um when we heard what was going on, because it's right down the street from us, we just blocked out. Because we thought he might be out behind these buildings back here and that three people have been shot. So we're really just kinda of waiting for word that he's been caught so we can leave as we're kinda of trapped in here. Now, investigators still have not disclosed any motive for the shooting. Meanwhile, there's been an outpouring of support for Westerly and its first responders, including from Governor Gina Raimondo, who was there this afternoon. My colleague Courtney Carter is with the governor, was with the governor when she was there, and joins us now live from Westerly. Courtney. Yes, the governor said she uh, paid a visit to Wesley Fire Department today. She said she wanted to see what a sense was like on the ground here. Um, and more importantly, what these first responders had to deal with. Now, she pointed out that it's been a very difficult day for first responders, but also for parents and students with schools on lockdown and, of course, the, the residents of Westerly. And I want to say thank you to them on behalf of everyone in Westerly and in Rhode Island. When they went into Babcock Village, it was an active shooter situation. They didn't know uh, what they were walking into. They put their lives at risk, and they walked in there. They stabilized the situation. And I want to say thank you to those brave men and women who responded. And to all of you, let us know if you need help. This is a stressful time of year. This is an unbelievably stressful event that happened today. Uh, we are here for you. Uh, if you have mental health needs or needs for support, please reach out. 
the message is Rhode Island is with you. We are with you. We're here to help you. This, and I'd ask the people of Rhode Island and the people of Westerly, let's rally around this community. Let's do what good neighbors do and provide the support and comfort and love um, that people who are involved in this and in this community need. Now, the governor says around 100 first responders were called in, including those from Connecticut. Live in Westerly, I'm Courtney Carter, Eyewitness News. All right, thank you, Courtney. We will have continuing coverage of today's deadly shooting in Westerly, both on air and online. You can also get the very latest headlines on our website and the WPRI 12 News app. First tonight at 6, our coverage continues of the shooting in Westerly that's left at least one victim and the suspect dead. Here's what we know right now. Police say a 66-year-old who lived at the Babcock Village shot three women in the building's main entrance. We're told one of the victims, a 47-year-old employee of the apartment complex, was pronounced dead at the scene. The other two victims, a 38-year-old employee and a 66-year-old resident, were rushed to hospitals. The suspect was later found dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And we have live team coverage tonight at 6. Target 12 investigator Tim White is standing by. But first, we go to Eyewitness News reporter Steve Nielsen and Steph Machado live at the scene. Well, Caroline, first off, of those three victims, one of them dead, as we've mentioned, the other in extremely critical condition. That's how the police chief described it, and the other just got out of surgery at the hospital. And neighbors and community members have been really shaken by what happened here today. It was a confusing time for a couple of hours with a heartbreaking ending. That's right. And why? these people may have been shot or if they are targeted. Those remain questions that are still unanswered tonight. Inside Babcock Village in Westerly, three people were shot, one dead, two seriously wounded. The Westerly tactical team rushed in. There's an active shooter incident you're going to. You're going right to the shooter to obviously eliminate the shooter, or isolate the shooter at that point. But the shooter couldn't be found. We began reviewing video surveillance in the building. We had to get an IT person from here up there to get into their system. Westerly Police Chief Sean Lacey says while schools went on lockdown, businesses closed and the outside of the complex was surrounded by bearcats and armed officers, the tactical unit went door to door inside to make sure other residents were safe. We did a cursory of every room to find out who was in the room and we had them shelter in place. Surveillance video captured a 66 year old man leaving the area where the victims were shot. He was a resident. State police say a robot entered the man's room around two hours after the first shot was fired. The suspect was dead. Well, it appeared to have a self-inflicted gunshot wound. They say they recovered a handgun in the room. His motive is unclear. And Target 12 has learned in just the last 30 minutes that police believe that the suspect uh, just purchased that handgun recently, and the early indications are that it was purchased legally. And um, speaking of the suspect, we do know that he was a resident here at Babcock Village, but his name has not yet been released. Of course, the situation that happened here today has just been alarming for the community. People in Westerly sheltered in their homes and workplaces. Schools went on lockdown. As police said, a shooting had happened at Babcock Village Thursday morning, a housing complex that has many elderly and disabled people living there. My friend's this brother lives there, so I was concerned for him and hoping that, you know, innocent bystanders were all okay, but you can only say a prayer and hope for the best. My grandmother's friends with a lot of the people here, and they're all so friendly and so nice. Like, I just don't see how this could have happened. We met Ashley and Morgan, two sisters at Babcock Village. Their grandmother lived there, and they weren't sure if she was okay. They've since connected, and she's safe. Police say the victim who died is a 47-year-old woman who was an employee of Babcock. Another employee, a 38-year-old woman, is described as in extreme critical condition at Yale New Haven Hospital, and a 66-year-old resident of the building was also shot and is at Rhode Island Hospital. Super scary. It Especially because, like, my, I have kids, so it's like I don't even want to bring my kids out anymore in this because stuff like this doesn't happen in Westerly, ever. And those victims' names have not yet been released. Um, the folks at Babcock Village tonight releasing a statement that they are shocked and saddened by the tragedy. And we will continue to bring you live updates tonight from Babcock Village and Eyewitness News at 6.30 and tonight at 10 and 11. For Steph Machado, I'm Steve Nielsen, Eyewitness News. All right, thanks, guys. And Target 12 investigator Tim White has been working this story all day long. Tim, you've been in direct contact with law enforcement throughout the day, and it was a very tense few hours as police were trying to locate that shooter. Caroline, it, 
It really was. Uh, the shooting started around 1030 this morning, and it wasn't until early this afternoon that we were able to report that the suspect was dead of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. And we now know more about what happened in those hours. As you heard, police had to review surveillance video to identify the suspect, and once they did, had to quickly come up with a plan to enter his room because they didn't know if he was alive or not. Their solution? was to go in remotely. Here's a picture of the very robot that was used today. As you can see, it has an arm and attached to that is a video camera. They can watch from a safe distance. Now that truck you see in the background, Caroline, is where they can wirelessly operate the robot. Our colleague, Mike Montecalvo, just happened to profile the bomb squad several weeks ago, and Mike asked one of the technicians how else they might use a robot like this beyond dealing with a suspicious device. It can actually be used with uh, other SWAT teams, or I should say SWAT teams, as a way to communicate with, to, for deliver drop phones or to communicate with a hostage taker, for example, a barricaded subject. Um, it has a lot of uh, usefulness and versatility. So almost foreshadowing the exact scenario we had today. They didn't know if the suspect was dead, so obviously it's better to have a robot shot at than a person. And Tim, you reported at five some new information about where the investigation into the suspect stands now. What can you tell people at home? Well, I did, Caroline. As uh, Steve mentioned, investigators believe the suspect recently purchased a handgun used in the crime. They are obviously looking at how and where it was purchased, but early indications are it was done so legally. Now, the police chief in Westerly said earlier today that the suspect was known to them, so there remains a lot of questions about what those interactions were with law enforcement. And Caroline, the chief says there was no red flag order on the suspect, which would have prevented him from purchasing the weapon. All right, thank you so much, Tim. And Count on Eyewitness News for continuing coverage of the Westerly shooting as this investigation is still ongoing. We'll bring you any updates on air online on WPRI.com and our news app as soon as we learn them.